Hello, a very warm welcome to you this 6th of September 2020. And whether you're uh, watching this live or as a later recording, either today or another day, I certainly pray that we'll be blessed as we gather together in worship. And if you are watching this live uh, and you have the facility, hopefully you'll see there's a sidebar at the side where please do feel free to say hello, make yourself known, and uh, maybe chat to one or two folks by that means. Uh, I apologize that last week, for some reason, there was a wee technical hitch on that side of things, and, and that didn't come up, but it should be available again, hopefully, once again this week. There are also the opportunities to see closed caption subtitles. There's a little button for that as well, if you want to use that. Also, please subscribe. There's a subscribe button that allows you to subscribe to this channel for updates. Uh, apparently, only one-third of those who tune in Sunday by Sunday have actually managed to subscribe. So if you're able to do that, you might find that helpful. And last but not least, if you either hit the like button uh, or share it with others, please do just that so that others too might uh, benefit from the service and hopefully find some encouragement there as well. Now, I've got just a couple of intimations to draw to your attention before we begin. Uh, the first one is a letter in from um, Alison Munn. We'll see this hopefully again in our Tidings uh, Church magazine, which will be coming out fairly shortly in the next week or two. Uh, there'll be a copy of this there as well. But it's just in respect to our usual Christmas shoebox appeal. Can we believe that it's already starting to approach Christmas? We've not that long to worry about it. It's got just a few months away, um, but already... The shops are starting to fill their, store, their shelves with different things for Christmas. It makes some people very delighted. Personally, I'd prefer to wait a little bit longer, but there we are. We're making our plans already, and that's certainly no bad thing. But in respect of our shoebox appeal, you'll probably appreciate that under the current circumstances, the, uh, the, the making up and the distributing of boxes and then the filling them with things uh, poses its own uh, risks around COVID. And so with that in mind, there's been a suggestion made that uh, since as we are involved with the Samaritan's Purse organization for the shoe boxes, that they've made available an opportunity to, by means of a donation, fill the boxes for us and uh, send them to where they're actually needed under the right kind of conditions to make that take place safely. So there are details about that on the, the church website, and they'll also be coming out in the church magazine as well. So look out for that one. Uh, next, we have uh, some information from Grasping the Nettle. Our own Karen Rollins has been in contact with the Exploring the God question, uh, which has continued to go on in an online format. So again, there's an opportunity for us to, to log into that and to see what's going on through the Grasping the Nettle. And again, this is going to come out in the church magazine for the contact details for that, as well as being available on a link from the church website as well. But uh, the... The public forum exercises that are taking place there, the Right Reverend Dr. Martin Fair, this year's moderator of the General Assembly, is going to be leading that and involved in that for us, heading that up. And uh, one of the uh, series of events that are going to be taking place throughout October in particular uh, is that of this title, Through a Glass Darkly, Journeys Through Science, Faith and Doubt with Professor Alastair McGrath. So... Hopefully, if, if that's to your interest, you'll find details of that. They're going to be held on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the 29th of October, 30th, and 31st of October at different times, and there are opportunities to connect in with that, um, as, as well as prior to that, some uh, God question things that are coming up by way of Zoom sessions with the moderator uh, at the end of September on the fifth, on Tuesdays, the 15th, 22nd, and 29th of September. So I draw those to your attention as well. Something to look forward to online over these uh, coming couple of months. Last but not least, of course, we have our own Drama Kirk, which at the end of this month, on the 29th of September, is going to start a series of, of studies, dramatized Bible studies, looking at the, the prophets, particularly the major prophets, that uh, had messianic uh, co uh, content within them, messianic prophecies. So our first one on September the 29th is going to be discussing the book of Isaiah. So on the lead up to Christmas, again, already the shelves are starting to fill in the shops. We're starting to get ourselves ready also uh, by way of the material that we're considering in this uh, lead up to the, the Christmas months, Advent, and then Christmas itself. 
We certainly need some good cheer. Christmas hopefully might just bring a little of that to us. But these are the intimations we have for today. I hope they're useful to you. We're going to have a little bit of music that's going to be on just for a few moments, just as I finish getting myself ready, and then we'll start our service. So I hope to catch you very shortly indeed. Thank you. Morning again. It's the 6th of September 2020, the 14th week of Trinity, or the 14th week after Pentecost, as we are gathered once more to worship. And this morning we're gathered with the words of Psalm 39. Behold, you have made my days a few handbreadths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. With these words in mind for our opening worship, let's sing hymn 214, New Every Morning is the Love.
call to prayer with further words of Psalm 39. Verse 5 has this to say, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I journey with you, a guest like all my forefathers. Let us pray. O oh God, in the pages of your word, we discover that you adorn the poor, binding rulers in chains, and allowing the people to rejoice. Rise up anew, our Lord. Adorn your creation. Bind all that seeks to destroy it, that we may not perish, but live. O oh God, often it seems that we have to eat bitter herbs as the angel of death has not passed over us. We grieve what we may have lost with the privations of lockdown and missing friends. We grieve those who we have lost, many taken far too soon, friends and family. And especially we grieve for those who have died from COVID-19, lives lost from all over our land, old and young, fit and frail, care worker and bus driver, nurse and doctor. As we grieve, we have to accept our complicity our failure to plan, our failure to learn the lessons, our failure to care for our world, and our failure to treat nature and animal life with respect. Forgive us, good Lord, and help us to turn our sorrow into action, our failure into change, our guilt into grace. God, the source of all mercy, you have sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins, for the equipping of the saints, and the fine-tuning of our hearts. May we know that we are forgiven, and know too that we, with all of humanity, need to use the grace of forgiveness to be an energy of change on this journey of life that you have given us to take. Hear us, almighty God, when we join together in heart and voice with the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, over the last few weeks, we've been talking about keeping sharp. We've especially been talking about keeping sharp by reading God's Word, which is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I'd like to examine this sword for a moment. We do it every week, bit by bit, as we look at our sermons and homilies, and, and maybe with our Bible reading challenge as well. But what is that Word, that Bible, all about? Because it's not just one book. It's actually a library of 66 books and letters. It might be a little bit like a library that you own. Maybe you've had a children's library like this with a variety of books in it as we've learned to read. Or maybe you like your own shelves are filled with books as they line up one after another. And the Bible is just like that as well. It contains 66 books. Now the first part, the biggest section of it, the Old Testament, all of that is, a, is roughly anywhere between two to three and a half thousand years old. 
It's an old, old section of the book, though some of the stories are perhaps older than that again. And there we learn so much about life, all of the good things, but also a lot of the bad things as well, from love and friendship all the way through to fear and hate and war. We read stories and we hear songs and psalms. We hear about history and action, journeys and struggle. And it points to someone to help fix all of those difficulties. It points to the Messiah, the promise of God. And it teaches us how he will fix things, or most importantly, what he will fix. It's difficult to read and understand, perhaps, because life itself can be very difficult. But then we come to the New Testament, the section that perhaps many times we're so much more familiar with, written over the course of a lifetime, nearly 2,000 years ago. It starts, of course, with the Gospels, the first four Gospels, that tell us about the Messiah arriving, about Jesus, the Messiah or the Christ, and much of what he did and taught, and more about the promise of God, and how we can receive that promise of God. Then we have lots of letters, still in the New Testament, but perhaps a half of that's a New Testament. We have letters and another book, Revelation, helping us to, to get on with one another and to encourage us to look at Jesus and to receive that promise of God. There's a message in there for everyone, though it can be difficult to see or perhaps to appreciate as we go through life, the journey of life, we often go through different stages within our lives. When we're children, we learn things very, very quickly. And it's perhaps when we're children, we learn about Scripture and the stories in there and the message that's to be found, perhaps the easiest of all. When we then become youths, well, perhaps we, we don't want to see anything except maybe the things that we find out for ourselves by our own hard-won experience. And that can be an exciting time, but it can also be a dangerous time as we start to experiment with life. And maybe we start to ignore our parents and our teachers and the Word itself, when all the advice we need is already there at our disposal. As time passes again, well, we might continue to be young at heart, but hopefully we start to appreciate the advice that others give us, and also we start to share those things that we've found useful within life, the things that have helped us. Though often it can be very difficult even at that stage in life to see past the things that we've learned for ourselves, maybe even to hear the simple message of Scripture. But life has a habit of breaking in with all its delights, but also its challenges. But perhaps we listen best at those kind of occasions, after we've maybe been shaken a little bit out of our self-confidence and become more able to listen again to what God himself might be saying to us through our experience, what happens in life, and through his word we listen to Jesus, the one who is the Word and the promise of God. But what is that essential message? When you use the sword of the Spirit of God's own Word to cut itself, and when we come down to the most important basics, what do we find revealed there at the heart as a message of all that Scripture tells us? Well, we're going to find out about that next week, which is also a communion Sunday when we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together, all ages together. And for that week, you're going to need bread and you're going to need wine or juice so we can actually uh, make use of these elements as we come together around the Lord's table. But for now, let's turn once more to those sharp and living words from Scripture itself as we look at our Scripture lesson this week.
We're looking at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, and we're reading verses 21 to 28. Just a short reading this week. Matthew 16, verses 21 to 28. And David Young will read that for us. Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 to 28, and it's from the New International Version. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in this kingdom. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless that reading of his own holy and inspired word, and to him be the praise. Amen. Thank you, David. We now listen to a previous recording of our choir singing, As the Deer Pants for the Water.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A story. There once was a man called Sim McLean, a simple man, but a faithful man, a true friend in all sorts of circumstances. And he made a friend of someone called Josh MacArthur. He was, well, in many ways, so much better than him and, and more successful. And Sim knew it, but they were firm friends. They traveled everywhere together on long and short journeys, all their holidays. They spent time in one another's company. And they'd known one another for a few years and were out hill walking with a group of friends when, when Josh told Sim that he was going on a journey, a journey of a lifetime. Now, I, I don't know if you know much of Africa, but in the country of Tanzania, there's a city called Dar es Salaam. It used to be the capital. I've, I've traveled near it, but I've never actually traveled to it. But I understand it can be quite a dangerous part of the world. But I digress. Josh wasn't going to Tanzania, but he was going to a city called Dar es Salaam. And it was twice as dangerous as perhaps our modern-day equivalent. Josh knew that it was dangerous, and he said as much. Sim knew it was dangerous, and he cared for his friend. He was concerned about this. They'd been walking side by side, and he stopped him. He actually stepped in front of him and said, It's too dangerous. Don't do it. Josh said, Don't get in my way. I've got to go there. If you're not with me, get behind me and let me get on. And then he turned to the rest of his friends, all of them now together, and said, Carpe diem, seize the day. It's a dangerous journey, but I want you to come with me on it. And then he sat down on a rock on that hillside, and he told them some of the route, some of the things that they would face together. And for all the other things, well, he had a great insurance policy just to make sure. Of course, the story is of Sim, Simon, Simon Peter, and of Josh, Joshua, Jesus, who says, follow me. Jesus is our friend, and he cares for us, far greater than Simon cared for Jesus himself. And he's promised to walk beside us, he has a pace that will get us to where we need to be when we need to be there. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. Sometimes it's calm. And sometimes it's incredibly challenging. Sometimes it means sitting at home when all we want to do is go somewhere, maybe even like our church buildings. Other times, it means going somewhere, to some place, or to see someone, when all we actually want to do is just sit at home. But if we get ahead of ourselves on this particular journey, or if we lag behind, or even worse, if we try to get in the way and try to stop him or hold up the journey, well, if we can't walk beside him, Maybe we need to walk behind him, where we're prone to get lost and travel roads that Jesus would much rather we avoided. He can direct us, but sometimes we have to take a telling. We've been told to follow Jesus, but he doesn't mean for us to follow 10 steps back or back in the mists where we can't see which way he's going. He wants us to walk by him, side by side, seeing what he does, learning from him every single day, side by side. It can be a challenging journey, 
a dangerous one perhaps. It can be a journey that takes us places that we would rather not be. Certainly if that were down to ourselves. But it's Jesus' journey and he, that he's taking us on. And its destination is a glorious one. Notice in our lesson today that Matthew wrote, chapter 16 from verse 24, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with all his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. If we know Jesus we love him and we care for him, just as Sim loved Josh, just as Simon loved Jesus himself. We'll want to walk with him, not in front of him, beside him. What have we done that we might be repaid by the Father? Simply, we have decided to follow Jesus, making the journey of a lifetime in company with him, and in company with one another. Amen. Let's conclude our service this morning singing the hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. As we go into this week following Jesus side by side, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide upon you all now and evermore.